Um, you know, for those of you guys who don't know the story, actually, this week, um, the Kraft family were able to send the, the team plane to China um, to grab about a million masks, I believe it was, a million masks. Yeah, and, we'll put over and, a million masks. When the masks got to, the ma to Massachusetts, um, the Kraft decided they wanted to uh, help out New York, who was, you know, in dire need of everything right now. So they decided to um, send them 300,000 masks, which is um, really big, you know, uh, for, for the Patriots to do. I know sports sometimes, it's like with the rivalries, it, it kind of like separates us. But at the same time, when things like that happen, you know, it brings us together too. Because, you know, at the end of the day, it is a sport. And, you know, what, what really matters is the safety of people, the, the health of people. And New York is not in a good spot right now. So definitely a huge shout out to them. Yeah, I um when I heard about the news, I was pretty impressed by um Robert Crab joining with our governor um to get this mask um and also to like supply New York. It's like a really big deal. New York is like the epicenter of the epidemic right now, so they need it they need it probably more than us. So um that was pretty big deal. Shout out to them. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so also, you know, speaking about the teams with, with, with football, um, with the Patriots and stuff like that, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but um, yesterday uh, Trump was supposed to call all the, the, the major sports, so what, what's that, MLB, NHL, MLS, um, NFL, just to discuss mm -hmm. what the outlook of the future is going to be like. Mm -hmm. um, you guys pay attention to that? Yes, I did hear about that, that they did have a conference call with the president of the of professional, uh, all the commissioners of the professional sports league in, in the country that did happen yesterday. Put on the body! Yeah, your mask, put your mask on. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> <laughs> put your mask I'm still on. trying to get used to this mask thing, Yo, man, bro, 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 bro. I'm not quite used to having this on all the time just yet. Like I know I have to wear it at work now with the mandatory and the requirements and it's tough to be able to wear uh, you know, a mask, you know, for eight hours while I'm on the shift. While you're out. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, I know people are probably going through the same thing, but you know, be uncomfortable for a couple, you know, for, for a few just to protect everybody. Um, even though, you know, we're, we're kidding around and, you know, having fun. Um, like I said, we're still trying to be careful. But speaking of um, Trump, like, what, what the hell is he calling the, the, the sporting, I mean, all, all the commissioners for? What, what is that all about? Um, especially the NFL, you know, with, with the whole kneeling situation. He started all that stuff, so I think it's funny that... Um, he would still be involved with, with, with those guys? Well, so what I heard is that um, based, on, based, on, based on what Woj was saying, that um, he called the commissioners and were telling them that sports need to be back online by August. Um, to have, he, was, he was telling them they need to be back? Pretty much. Um, he basically was saying the the sports commissioners need to help the country get back on the uh, get back and rolling especially um specifically econo economically uh wow. just to you know get everything get back and running get people outside get people spending money and he wants sports to be back by august and then the adam silver the nba commissioner basically replied back by saying um that's cool and all but we're not going to be doing that until it's medically clear that um, people can get, get back in arenas and be in close proximity with, to each other. And also um, public health um, officials need to say that it's okay for people to be in, in, in public gatherings. Um, so as much as, as much as Trump wants to get everything back and running by August, there's a lot of, uh, professionals that are saying that might not be a reality. That's what people would hope, but that might not be a reality. The reality might be that sports might be back, but it might be 
behind closed doors with no um with no audiences and with no spectators you know what i mean um yeah. so so yeah no i mean um to be honest with you you know i kind of i like that trump wants you know the country to be back you know back back to what we do and things like that and mm-hmm. make money economically trying to um get the country back on its feet but at the same time we're not we're not stupid and, you know we're not going to we're not going to risk our health just because you know everybody wants sports out there to me you know you know what i'm saying nobody wants sports more than you know guys like us that are trying to do sports podcasts um and things like that but even us you know we know as as responsible human beings like listen man if the doctors don't say we should be out there or it's okay to be out there we ain't about to be out there exactly you know, exactly you know it, I, i'm hoping you know i'm praying that sports is back um to where it should be but if it ain't what are we gonna do you know i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep you know posting stuff i'm gonna keep talking about sports you know because that's never shoot i might have to invent one myself if, if anything you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> um but you know just just make sure that if everything is good to go out there before we do anything because i do have a child and i'm not gonna put her in danger because Trump wants the country to be back, you know, within a certain amount of time. It just doesn't work like that. Yeah. Um, and and also you you want to be there for your child as well. You don't want to be subject to this coronavirus. And and also if we don't protect ourselves, we're not going to be there to watch the sports. We're not going to be there to talk about the sports. There's perfect. there's projected they're projecting to <laughs> the <laughs> They're projecting they're projecting 240,000 deaths, and I don't want to be any of that. So, uh, 240,000. 240,000. Listen, man. I believe in God. It's not even funny, man. It's no joke. It's no joke. As much as I want, as much as I want sports, I want to be healthy first. Exactly, you know that. Right, right. You want to be healthy enough to watch those sports when they do come back on. Exactly. Right, you know, like like Kanye said, stretch thy hands. You know what I'm saying? I'm all set. <laughs> um, but but let's move on. There, there's some things that are happening that happened this week. Um, some huge stuff that happened this week. Um, one mainly is uh, the NBA Hall of Fame. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, First of all, before we talk about the, the top three guys that we want to talk about, um, I do want to shout out everybody else that made the Hall of Fame, the Basketball Hall of Fame. And um, those people are Kevin Garnett, um, you know, the big ticket, um, Tim, Tim Duncan, Tim Duncan, um, the big fundamental, Kobe Bryant, Black Mamba. Um, so Kevin Garnett and Tim Duncan are, are 15-time All-Stars. Um, and Kobe Bryant is an H-time All-Star. Uh, and then we got a coach, Eddie Sutton. Um, he's a four-time National Coach of the Year. Um, we have a two-time NBA champion, Rudy Tomjanovic, uh, uh, ten-time w- WNBA All-Star, four-time Olympic gold medal. Um, Tamika Catchings, three-time NCAA National Championship coach of uh, Baylor, Kim Mulkey, um, five-time Division National Coach of the Year, Barbara Stevens, and. Um, Longtime FIBA executive um, Patrick Bowman, if I if I'm saying that right. So shout out to all of them. Um, and I think the top three that we all of us are connected to the most are um, Kevin Garnett, Tim Duncan, and um, rest in peace Kobe Bryant. Yes, sir. Sir, absolutely. Big shout out to everybody that made the um, you know and got inducted to the Hall of Fame yesterday, particularly those uh, top three guys in KG. Kobe Bryant and, and Tim Duncan. Oh, that was awesome and uh, and pretty, you know, incredible to see all those guys get into the Hall of Fame at the same time in the same class too, since they're you know part of the same era and all played uh, together and in their primes roughly around the same time. So no, I'm I was very happy and excited to see um, and hear that all those guys were inducted into the Hall of Fame as it, it's well deserved that, you know, they all get in there. Definitely all first ballot uh, Hall of Famers and, you know, the best players of, you know, of the era. So, no, big, 
big, big uh, shout outs to, to them. And I love watching all of those guys play. Those guys were definitely um, great players and, uh, and had a lot of impact on the game of basketball. And even today, they, they have an impact still um, on the current players that are playing right now. I'm sure I looked up to those guys. So, um, yeah, it was, it was great to see that those guys were uh, honored and awarded for their um, legendary careers that each one of them had. Yeah, um, how are you feeling about that? Well, I don't, I don't know if you guys want to talk about each guy individually. Yeah, I think, um, no, I, I just, just wanted your thoughts on, you know, the NBA Hall of Fame announcement period, and then we can get to, uh, all right, and to each guys. Oh well, I mean, I mean, this is this is a class of elites. Like you, those three guys played together in the same era, and um, and they dominated the the era that we watched basketball. Right, like we we grew up watching all those guys: Kevin Durant, Tim Duncan, Kobe Bryant, all those guys winning championships um, in the early thousand, in the early two thousands, and in the late two thousands. Um, and my basketball, my me watching basketball was centered around those guys. And yeah, I'm, I'm just, I just think it's it sucks that Kobe's not gonna be there. Um, rest in peace. Um, but this is a class of elites for sure. Yeah, facts. Um, Absolutely, I agree. Uh, yeah, so you know, I think all of us have been watching basketball for a really long time. And I think, you know, um, all of us grew up and we have different guys that we like and different guys that we follow. Um, so maybe take, take this time to maybe talk about, um, you know, each of these guys and, and what you guys think is going to be most memorable for you. And, um, you know, just basically your thoughts on, on each of these guys. So um, I think I'm going to start off with, um, with this, um, Kevin Garnett, uh, you know, from Minnesota, and then went to the Celtics, and then went to the Nets, um, and then did, he went back to Minnesota, right? Yeah, he he, year, he, he finished his career. career. Right, um, right. You know, initially, you know, being a Celtics fan, I wasn't paying too much attention to Kevin Garnett. I always knew about him. I always knew he was a beast and, you know, one of the best guys in the league, um, but he was in the West, and we didn't see him too often. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't like always in the back of my mind, but once he got here, um, it was like night and day, you know, um, it was like the team, the team got like a new energy around it, mm -hmm. you know, um, a new energy, new edge, new grit. Um, and the way they, they started playing was just like, um, I don't know, it was nothing I've ever seen before, you know, the way he comes out and he's banging his head on, on, on the, the post. The, the post. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, he's looking crazy, and then he, he's hitting the floor, and he's defending you and stuff like that. Um, and the way he, it's like when he's on the court, nobody's a friend. You know, um, it don't matter if he's known you for 20 years or you just got drafted. He's gonna come at you. You know, yeah. uh, one of my most most uh, memorable, <laughs> one of my most memorable moments for Kevin Garnett. It's probably not a great one. Um, is that whole film stuff. You know, where feeling away it was like, oh, you call me a cancer patient. You know, I thought, you know, it was it wasn't funny, but it was funny. Cause then Kevin Garnett was like, No, 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 I said your cancer is your team. You know, like <laughs> dude, shut up. <laughs> it was like, KG, you know what you said, bro. You know exactly what you said. Uh, but huge respect for him. He, you know, he, without him we don't win a championship. Um, so thank, thank him for bringing that championship in 08. I, I wish the sure. team, you know, was able to pull it off in 2009, but, you know, at least he brought us one. Um, yeah. I'm glad he did get one because he went through a lot of his years not being able to get one. Yeah. You know, yeah. Absolutely. You know, a lot of his prime years not even, not being able to do something. Um, and then we got Tim Duncan, who <sighs> I've always been a fan of Tim, Tim Duncan. Just because, like, I feel like we, we have kind of, like, the same mannerisms when we play sports. It's like, I'm the guy that's not going to talk, you know? Like, I have, like, that competitive edge, but, like, I'm not going to be in there talking trash because it's like, all right, I'm, I'm about to bust your ass. You, you talking trash, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, 
And I, I always hated the guys that talk a lot of trash because it's like, all right, bro, I know for a fact I'm better than you. So I'm going <laughs> to shut you up by doing the best I can and, um, you know, by killing you as much as possible. And I feel like Tim Duncan was one of those guys where he, he had that edge to him, but he just yep. never said much. Um, and then, um, you know, so congrats to him. And he's coaching now, and he looks good. You know, he got the dress going on. Oh, yeah, which, yeah. which is yeah. fire, all right? Oh, yeah. You know, shout out to Tim. And then Kobe Bryant, man, I think we, we spent a lot of time talking about him during our first episode. Um, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, our audience knows how I feel about Kobe Bryant. You know, rest in peace to him. I wish he was here. Um, but, you know, he's in the Hall of Fame, man, and I, I think – we didn't need to wait for him to make the Hall of Fame. Like he deserved it right now. Just put him in right now. Yeah. Um, I wish he was here so we could hear his his speech, but he's not. And I hope the other guys can handle the torch for him. You know. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up for you guys. Um, I'll go. Um, Kevin, obviously Kevin Garnett, obviously big ties to Kevin Garnett since he won a championship as a Celtics. Um, just like John was saying, we didn't pay much much attention to Minnesota back back in the West just because we didn't play him that that often. But you knew who Kevin was, you know what I mean? When you know, when you, yes, sir. Yeah. You knew you knew who he was in the paint, and and you know, and you knew you knew his mid range jump shot was killer. So when he oh, came, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 When he came to seven, I was from the way exactly. Oh, that was money from 20. Oh, yeah, from 18 to 18, 20. We in there. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. So, when he came to the Celtics and he changed the culture of the Celtics and the way they played, the aggressiveness, the way they played on defense, the edge, um, Kevin was the ultimate defender, the ultimate leader of the Celtics. Um, without him, we don't we don't win that um, that championship, and his leadership carried that team. I know people always said it was Paul Pierce's team. I'm not saying it wasn't, but Kevin Garnett was the leader, like the vocal leader. It was definitely Kevin Garnett, and mm-hmm. and also he he's one of those players that you 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 want to play with, but you don't want to play against. When he's on your team, you you love him. But when you're playing against him, you hit him just because the things he would say to you, the way he would act around you on the court. Um, but I don't know. I love Kevin. He's a cool guy. I, I like him a lot. Um, yeah. No, I, sure. I, think, I think he should he should dress like he's, you know, close to 40 because um, he'd be having some tight pants on. That's, <laughs> the, uh, that's the only thing. You know, like, bro, you're like 7'3". <laughs> at least put some fitted clothes on. That's, that's his style. I'm not gonna knock him. Out. Well, um, that that black, bro. <laughs> um, so the the funny thing about Kevin Garnett, Kevin Garnett and Tim Duncan are really good friends, right? Yeah. But they they're very different people. Very different people. Tim Duncan, very quiet, just shows up, does his job correctly, the same way he does it every night. Um. He, He's um, off, um, off the backboard shot. Nobody can guard that. And he'll do that thing on you every, every night, and you can, you can block it. Um, but, right, right. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. It's, they're night and day. They're night and day as players, but they're really good friends. And, and it's, it's, it's nice that they're getting into the Hall of Fame together. Um, I liked him a lot just because um, he was very consistent. I love guys that are very consistent. Um, I know they like it. They call him the big fundamental, the boring guy. I don't know. To me, he wasn't boring because you knew what you were going to get every night. And every right. night you were going to get Tim um, scoring and doing his best on defense. I don't know. Um, and now he's coaching. We'll see. We'll see if he can do the same thing he did on the court as a coach. Um, but congrats to Tim. Congrats to Kevin. Um, Kobe Bryant, I don't know. Much, how much can I say that people didn't already know? Yeah. Um, just killer instinct. Nobody, killer. nobody, nobody like him other than Michael Jordan. Um, he's Michael Jordan the second. Put on the battery. That, 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 
that's what that's what uh, Kobe Bryant was like on the court. He's a killer. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's for sure. That's for sure. I think I think um, one of the things that I I enjoyed was that we won a championship against Kobe, um, just because he was so dominant in his prime, and we were able to win a championship against him. Um, as a Celtics, that was really cool to me. Oh, that was but, beautiful. But then he came back. But he, but then he came back and beat that ass. So I, can, I don't know if I can say anything after that. So, Yo, you hear he actually kept the cutout of Paul Pierce for the whole year after he lost. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Yes. Like you're nuts. You know. And what and, and, oh, and that, that's Kobe's mentality. You know what yeah. I mean? That's 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 Mamba mentality, yes, sir. Listen, I've never heard anything. I'm, I've heard of guys, you know, keeping a schedule in their locker rooms. I mean, in their lockers and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I've definitely heard of guys, you know, keeping um, certain people in their lockers just to, like, keep motivated and stuff like right, that. Right, right. But I've never heard anybody, like, walk around with somebody's picture the whole time, just just waiting for that for that moment, you know? Right, right. Um, Go ahead, Derek. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I'll start with KG, Kevin Garnett, uh, one of my uh, all-time favorite, not only Celtics, but players. All-time. Uh, for, for, for sure. Uh, the guy was just, uh, he, he, was an, he had an incredible career, and he was an incredible player. And I, same thing for you guys, like I knew about, him being, you know, a big basketball fan that I am, I did uh, follow some of uh, the, you know, his time in Minnesota and watch some games, but not too much uh, since they, you know, weren't on TV as much and, uh, you know, they played all in the West Coast. So, you, you know, I was aware that he was, you know, a really good player and, you know, one of the top players in the league. Uh, you know, but he hadn't really won much of anything due to the uh, supporting cast and not having much talent around him in Minnesota. So when he came over to Boston got, and got traded here, um, that it was, yeah, the summer of 2018, uh, was ecstatic. I was, you know, excited that we were bringing another superstar. 2018 or? It was, oh, excuse me. Not 2018, 2008. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. I, I don't know why I just, uh, you know, said, said it like that and why it came out. But anyway, uh, he was traded here uh, in that big blockbuster trade uh, where we traded like seven players to um, the Timberwolves just to get Kevin Garnett back here and We'll get him over here in Boston to you know, get Paul Pierce some help. Oh, help. And, and that was after we had traded in, in the draft uh, to get Ray Allen. So we already had Paul Pierce and Ray Allen here. And, um, you know, we were in the market to get a big man. And uh, we didn't know that he was going to be available. And then all of a sudden, boom, they, they was just able to pull off that trade. and. Uh, formed the big three, and um, as soon as he got here, you're right, like, things just instantly changed, uh, and it was crazy how, like, quick those guys gelled, and um, and what, you know, Kevin Zan was able to bring to the table, and, uh, and how quick he was able to, like, change the whole mindset and mentality of that team. The franchise, as soon as he got here, um, we instantly made it a, a, to, you know, a much more, like, defensive-minded team, like you guys said, like, gritty, scrappy, uh, you know, hu- hustling, like, playing hard, like, you know, leaving everything all on the floor, uh, you know, like, blood, sweat, and tears. I know that was one of their models in 2008. Uh, you know, when, when that team was put together, you know, with, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, because they literally their blood, you know, sweat, and tears when they were out on the court, they would give it, you know, everything they had, and that's a thing that I've always respected about Kevin Garnett was that 
intensity and the passion and the energy level that he was able to play at and not only to, to play play that um you know in the big games but every night like there was legit no drop off with uh, any of those things with, with him because there's some guys that you can tell yeah, okay they don't have it tonight or they're not playing with as much energy right um, even in that same intensity level but with him it was always constant and he um, he would always, uh, you know, get me hyped up when I'd watch him play. So I always loved, you know, seeing him, like, bang on the floor, uh, you know, bang his head on the podium uh, before um, games. Uh, you know, even hit his, uh, the ball on his head when he missed the free throw and messed up and even, like, blocked uh, an opponent's shot after the whistle blew just so I didn't see the ball going down. That's right. Uh, Don't get comfortable. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, he wouldn't even let the you know the ball get past him if he was in the paint and saw a shot go up after the whistle blew. So I uh, didn't thank him for also bringing banners seventeen. We definitely don't have seventeen banners. We definitely be tied with the Lakers with sixteen as of right now. If it wasn't for him, so he was a big part in. Um, you know, bringing a you know championship to Boston, it sucks. He only got one championship here. He, you know, could have gotten at least another one had he not been injured. Uh, you know, in 2009, so that was unfortunate. But you know, appreciate him uh, being able to uh, bring the championship here and being a big part of that team. Uh, as for Tim Duncan, definitely uh, had always had a lot of respect for him. Uh, you know, was the most fundamentally sound player that I've seen. I mean, he was also a competitor, but he was a different kind of competitor than uh, KG was or even Kobe was, right? He was a sound assassin. That's, That's right. Like That's right. Think of him as, mm-hmm. like, he just went out and didn't say a word, and he would just let his game do the talking. Come on, the yeah, yeah, I kind of like that. Right, right. He would just let his game do the talking, <laughs> and, uh, and he would just, like, give you buckets and uh, and, and cook you in, 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 in the post. You know, you know, you knew if you were going against him, if you didn't bring your A game, uh, you were in for a long night. So he, there's definitely much respect to him and what the accomplishments he had in his career, uh, you know, being a five-time champion. Uh, you know, winning a league MVP like each one of those guys did, and also a finals MVP as well. And so, you de- definitely uh, respect his game a lot, and I think he's the greatest power forward of all time, in my opinion. So, yeah, that's a whole that's a whole other show right there. Right, and then Kobe Bryant, I'll just keep it <laughs> yeah. you know, with him, the Black Mamba. Uh, you know, the, probably the most fierce competitor I've seen, and a cold-blooded killer. Uh, we talked about the guy that having a punch gene, not scared of taking a big shot in the big moment and, you know, the biggest games. Uh, he, you know, always had, you know, that's the mama mentality right there. He always had that since day one. And he's always uh, been a guy that you feared playing against him because you knew that he wasn't scared of anything when he was on the court and that he was giving it everything he had and that he was going to kill you, you know, and, and he was going to find a way, even when he wasn't playing his best game, to find a way to win that game and to make a big shot and make a big play that was going to help his team win. So uh, much respect to the three of those guys and uh, for what they did for me, having a, a big impact on me as a basketball fan, on uh, being really into the game. Uh, as I am now, so, so since it was awesome to be able to grow up to watch those guys play and play at a high level and see the peak of their careers and uh, what they were able to do um, you know, when they were in their prime. So I uh, appreciate everything those guys did for, for the game of basketball. Facts, facts. Um, you know, as much as we, we um, want to talk about these guys, um, but I want to make sure we, we hit up on some other stuff because, you know, our time speaking about the NBA is about to, about to be over. Um, right. So, you know, we can't, we can't do a podcast without talking about our local 
you know, um, our local teams. And I think right now, one thing we were talking about was um, Kemba. I think something came out where um, he said something about, he made a comment about his knee. Because mm-hmm. as you guys know, um, he's had some knee issues the last couple, the last several weeks of the season. You know, he wasn't able to play some a few of those games. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he made a comment about his knee. He said that, you know, with the coronavirus, things have been kind of hard because um, right. Right. he is not able to get the um, <laughs> able to get the, the treatment that he needs. And, you know, obviously this is Boston and people are going to freak out. And, you know, I think yeah, they, sure. you know, we freak out over everything. Um, like as soon as you say something, we're freaking out. But um, Bro, facts. and so yeah. people are taking it out of proportion. And they're, you know, they're thinking that, um, you know, he has like a major knee issue. And I mean, we don't know if he has a major knee issue. Right, we don't know the but, exactly. but with his comments, um, I don't know if that's like a green light to say, oh man, Kemba Walker's knee is like done for. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um. Vlad, I know you you brought that up the other day, right? About Kimba Walker's knee injury. Kimba's knee? Yeah. Well, I I heard the video where he was talking about it, and he basically was saying it's okay. He's just not receiving the treatment that he would be receiving if the coronavirus wasn't intact. Basically, he would be at the stadium receiving treatment every day, so it would be okay. Um, The only thing about it is just, it's a reoccurring injury, right? So he had it in 2016, and now it's back again. And he had it drained in 2016, and now he's get he had it drained a couple months ago. Um, I just, I guess my worry is so what what is what is the deal with that injury? Is that something he can get fixed through um, surgery? Like, is that something that's gonna keep coming back? Um, if we were if we were going to the playoffs. Um, in a couple of weeks, where um, if the NBA was active, would he have been okay? Like, um, as a fan, I think I'm just thinking about that. Not that I'm, um, not that I'm saying his knees um, is bad or he can't play with that without it. I'm just saying how bad of an injury is it, and um, what's what's like what's gonna what's gonna happen to it in the future? Yeah. Um... I don't know. I feel like the Celtics are a really good organization, and I feel like they take care of their players. You know, I mean, we've seen Kyrie Irving come through, and he went down basically half the damn season. And, you know, they didn't push him. They didn't, you know, make him do things that he didn't want to do. So I feel like as though um, the Celtics are a good organization when it comes to, like, player injuries and taking care of the players because they look at the big picture. So I don't see it as, you know, Kemba Walker having like this major knee knee issue and they just like oh you gotta tough it out you know I think it's definitely something that's manageable yeah uh, or else they wouldn't be in the position they're at and I think you know given the the coronavirus um, situation and NBA not being in season right now well mm-hmm. it's not um, occurring right now uh, I think that that can only help this situation with healing and uh, making sure he comes back a hundred percent. I I agree, but do you guys would it, do you think do you think he's gonna is that an injury that it's gonna stop him from being great? Like, cause I don't think we can win without Kimba. So, like, well, what, that, what, that, what does that mean as far as him when playing? You say, when you say you don't think we can win, do you mean like regular season games or the the, the championship? No, we win. We win. We win multiple regular season games, but the right. championship. Right, so you don't think we can make it to the championship? And it's gonna be time. it's gonna be a lot harder. Which I agree, I agree. No, definitely, I agree with that as well. Yeah, no, for sure. But I, I I think that's where my worry is coming from. Not that I um think I don't think we can win a couple of games, but to go to go to the length that we want to go, um, it's gonna be tough if this injury keeps persisting. Yeah, no, for sure. I I definitely agree with that as well, and uh. It is pretty concerning to hear him say that uh, of the knee, the knee injury that you know he's currently going through. Um, hopefully, it's not too serious and too severe that you know would you know keep him out. You know, for two 
much longer when the season does come back, whenever that is, because uh, you're at this team so that we, we can to be at full strength, or at least close to uh, 100%, if they're going to make a deep playoff run and, uh, and possibly even uh, come out of the East and, and get to the finals, which they're definitely capable of doing uh, as long as you know, the rest of the guys play the way they were playing before the season got suspended. So it's certainly a little bit, uh, you know, I'm a little worried about it, but not too worried. I think you're right, like you said, John, it's something that can uh, be managed by the, you know, medical yeah. staff and the trainers and the coaching staff as well. They're usually pretty good at that. Uh, and, you know, limiting guys that they know that are getting up and not 100% not, you know, and giving them the rest when they need to. And, uh, and you know, also not playing as much. Uh, but it was kind of, I feel like, holding the team back a little bit when he was on that minute restriction, uh, just for the simple fact that not only was he on the minute restriction, but the whole team was kind of banged up. So uh, it was kind of, you know, it was, that was the time when they really needed him to step up and he really needed him on the court and to play a lot more minutes than he wasn't able to. So I'm sure hopefully when, uh, you know, the season does come back and when teams can get back into their facilities and get back in touch with their medical staff and trainers, he is able to get that treatment that he needs to get this close to 100% and he can get back on the court and be the Kimbo Walker he was at the beginning of the season as opposed to the one that he was playing uh, as of late since he was struggling, um, you know, and not playing as well. So they'll definitely be back um, to playing, I feel like, what he was earlier in the season. I'm pretty confident in uh, his ability to do that. Yeah, man. Um, you know, shout out to KW15. If you guys on Instagram, you can follow him, KW15. Shout out to the Celtics in general, man. And can't wait to see you guys back on the court. Yes, man. I know. And, I miss them. I miss them so much. And I miss the NBA. And yeah. And, all this and doing what they what they love to do. Uh, right. Speaking yeah. of the NBA, another news, um, you know, just, just being aware of time. Um, the NBA is proposing that they, they're going to do a televised um, horse tournament. Yes, sir. Play yeah. horse? You guys played horse before? Yes, I have. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, um, I was actually posting about it, and some people were asking me, what is horse? You know, because obviously we... People we never play. heard about it. Some people, you know, they, they like sports, but they've never played certain things. So, mm-hmm. you know, for the people that don't know what horse is, it's just basically this game where you have a few players that are on the court, and, you know, they're taking all different kind of shots, and, you know, the starter takes a random shot, and the next person has to take that same shot and make that same shot. And if they don't make that same shot, they get an H, all right? Get and right, right. the more they miss the shot that they're supposed to make, the next letter they get, and the first person to hit horse loses. And it just continues to, you know, if you're hitting all your, sh- if you're hitting all your shots, then you shouldn't get any letters. But if you're missing, you know, um, you're, you're probably going to be out pretty quick. Right. Um, and the news is that they're actually – a lot of high-profile players are going to be participating in that. So um, I'm actually pretty excited to see it. Um, I did a poll um, on pro, pro fans on the school sports um, IG. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I asked the people, the audience, would they want to tune in? And it seems like majority, like something like 86% or something like that, they said they would tune in to watch a horse tournament. Oh, um, nice. That's awesome. But speaking of that, who would you guys want to see in the tournament? Yeah, I um, I can start. Yeah, go ahead. Damien Lillard. Damien Lillard. Yes, James Harden. Yes, James Dollar. Steph Curry. Yes. Oh yeah, Oh yeah, he's making shots from the tunnel. So good luck with that. (laughs) Right, right, right. exactly. Kyrie Irving. Yes. Yes. Uncle Drew. Yeah. And because this is horse and not basketball, Kevin Durant. Yes. Uh, because, yeah, he can. Be, exactly, because he's not running right. around. He's just shooting. Yeah. Right, right. The slim yeah. back and forth. Yes, sir. Barry, and, 
and there's a lot more people, but those are the guys that I, I, I was before I was thinking about it while I was um getting ready for the show. I was like, yeah. let me let me write down a couple of guys, and those are the guys that came to mind as soon as I started thinking about. I, I like your list. I like your list, Derek. Uh, I definitely agree with those lists. Uh, uh, some other guys I would like to see that I think would definitely do well and be pretty cool and awesome at horse with uh the Luka Doncic. Oh, you took mine, dude. <laughs> my bad, my bad. No, I would love to see Luka. Luka, Luka I think Luka, 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 oh yeah. Luka can <laughs> take some incredible and unbelievable shots and tough shots, Matt. Yeah. I think a lot of guys in the league can't make. Um, I'd like to see him in that. I'd like to see Trey Young in that. <laughs> well, I think another Yo. one. Bumbo, oh, bro. Man. I feel like I'm like reading your mind. But you're you're like, I must be talking. You're killing oh, me right now. Uh, so I would certainly like to see him in there. Uh, and I wouldn't uh, mind seeing that. Come on, the Oh, I would mind seeing that between Harden. Woo! In the, in the, in the Woo! Like, James Damn. Harden. James Harden. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mentioned him. Uh, yeah, James, James, James 13. So um, he, I think he'd be another one that I'd like to see. Um, and I'd probably see if I had to pick one. How many four. you got so far? Those three. So you got three? Two, How many did you do? Four. You five. Did you did five. five. All right. it was, yours was Damian Lillard. James Harden. James Harden. Steph yeah. Curry. Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. Kylie, Kyrie Irving. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kevin Durant. Okay, yeah. So I'll go with the three guys you said, and then I'd say I definitely want Steph in there. Um, and then I'd like to also see, last but not least, I would like to see KB. KB, yeah. In, in there as well. So those would be my five guys to be in the horse competition. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that um, you guys didn't mention this to me. Um, I'd like to see LeBron. Right? I know, I, I was thinking about that. You guys didn't see LeBron. Yes. But um, I, LeBron is a guy that does a lot of stuff like free game, a lot of stupid stuff, like he'll be doing the trick shots, like crazy dunks and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm definitely curious to see what that would look like in a game of horse. And I th- I think he was uh, doing some weird shot um, on the Olympic team with like Kevin Durant or something like that. I saw a video uh, where he did some really weird stuff. And I'm like, if he if he hits that during the game, like he wins, you know, because <laughs> nobody's going to do that. Right, right, so, right, right, right. LeBron for sure. I mean, he's, he's a face of the league. So right, right, you know, um, I would love to see uh, Devin Booker. Ooh, D Book. Boy. Ooh, yes. I'd like to see D Book in that too. Yeah, D Book. Woo! You know? He can he can knock down some tough shots. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh yeah, no. D Book is nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would like to see who else could I have in my mind? Um I don't know why, but I'd like to see Rondo in there. Rondo. Okay. Yeah. Really? You think he could make tough shots? Well, not just tough shots, like really weird, weird shots. Like, like circus, you know, trying to point out shot. with the passes and stuff like that. that that's why I'm using my head. Like also, like like um, a, a long little ball, you know, just just with the crazy passes that he's making. Um, you know, I know. I'm what about what about this Zion? Shooting competition. <laughs> <laughs> this is a shooting competition. I know, right? Well, guys, these are the people. Tough and weird stuff. These are the people I'd like to see. Them, you know, no, what about Zion? Huh? Zion. Zion, I don't know about all that. Yeah, I don't, this, I don't know. This, this, not, well, this is not a dunking contest. Right, right. Um, exactly. And, you know, last but not least, uh, I, I, you know, I talk a lot, I talk bad about him all the time, but I still respect him as a player. You know, like, nobody's touching him on the court um, as far as dribbling, you know, crossing people up. Kyrie Irving, man. Like, bro, he's a dog. You know, exactly. Can he, not oh, only right, can, he, right. can he, you know, he has the ball on the string. He has the ball like a yo-yo. Um, he could also make shots. You know, oh, you, know yeah. he can make it, you know, the same shots as anybody else in the league. So oh, yeah, um, I think he would be one of those big guys in there. Um, 
as far as like who would win, I don't, I don't think this is a game like you can actually pick who's going to, you know, would win because it's like they're, they're taking crazy shots. Mm-hmm. Like you can't predict that, you know. Anybody could have like a lucky streak and and win, you know what I'm saying? But um, if I was to pick a winner out of all those people we talked about, was um would be uh Steph Curry just because he used to <laughs> crazy <laughs> shots, right you know, right those tunnel shots for me is like all right man, and he makes them like he's at the three point line so right um, right that that would be a winner for me. You guys. Um, oh, out of the ones that I picked, uh, and that's that's pretty tough as far as who would win. Yep. And I'd probably either go to Steph Curry or. Trey Young. Mm. I love Trey. I love yeah, Trey. Yeah, that was the Trey I, 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 I could see either, either the five, yeah. I think either one of those two guys, um, you know, winning that the horse competition. Like if those guys make, you know, a ridiculous, ridiculous and worldly shots that you wouldn't even think that people know would only take, but actually, you know, make them and Ooh. make them at the percentage that they do make them. So I would probably say either one of those two guys for me would be, uh, you know, my favorites and top guys to win the competition. Okay. Ooh. Vlad, go and make it quick because we're, 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 you know, the time. The time is running here. Yes, sir. Um, I think it's easy to pick Steph Curry. So yeah. I, I can't pick him. And I hate the... <laughs> oh, boy, okay. I hate that one. I hate... I hate this guy a lot because of what he did to the Celtics. Yeah. But I'm going to pick Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Yeah. I, I man, I put him against anybody. So, right, right. You know, I can't wait to see it. I don't know when that's going to be. But um, the way it's set up, they're saying guys are not going to come together. They're going to be like their, their home gyms mm-hmm. to like make crazy shots. And then somebody else at their house is going to, you know, be able to do that same shot. So yeah, yeah, hopefully yeah. they can. You know, set it up where everybody has like uh, you know high definition camera. And right. Hopefully the production is right. All mm-hmm. right. Um, but I think the last thing about uh, well, last but not least, the last thing about NBA we want to touch on is uh, there's a big docu series coming out um, at the you know mid month this this month or April nineteenth. April nineteenth. Coming out in a couple um, weeks. Uh, Michael Jordan, today, yeah. Michael Jordan saved uh, the Last Dance, which is uh, pretty much a docu series about um, his his last championship run. Right, right. right. Yep. So that that's pretty cool. Um, other than that, are you guys looking forward to that? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm ecstatic and uh, and thrilled to be able to watch that documentary. I can't wait until it comes out in two weeks on April 19th uh, and we get to see behind the scenes footage about the, you know, the, the last championship run together and, uh, you know, and, and, and those things that happen, uh, you know, behind the closed doors and, you know, and off the, the court, you know, as well as on the court. So, uh, so she's being, being a big uh, Michael Jordan fan, uh, and you know, definitely in the show will learn a lot more about the things that you know have transpired during that season and what really made that team so successful and click and you know become uh, you know arguably the greatest dynasty in sports. So yeah, I'm already booked that you know and, and marked that on my calendar and. Uh, we'll definitely be tuning in and watching that documentary, uh, like all the other basketball fans and you know, but most of the country will. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure it'll be, uh, it will be, be definitely be good stuff, and you know, and really cool to see what happens, uh, you know, with that team and that you know, no one really uh, knows just yet. I was really young when Michael Jordan played, so. I didn't get to watch him that much, so yeah. I'm very. I'm um, 
Go ahead. I'm looking forward to this, and most of, but most most importantly, I want to see the behind the scenes stuff. How Michael Jordan was in practice, how he yelled at those guys, challenged those guys, um, the frivolous money that he was spending. I want to see all that. So uh, yeah, this is, and also there's nothing else to watch right now. So yeah, hell yeah, I'm excited for this. Fast, Le- LeBron said they should drop it. Soon, sooner than June, and then boom, here, here it goes. It's happening. Well, they, 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 they got nothing to do. It's not like they have the games. What else are they going to put on the broadcast yet on the ESPN? Exactly. Like you were saying, man, um, you know, the there's no more time other than not to get as many views as possible. Because, like, in June, like, if the, if the season was on a regular basis right now, that would be the, the championship. How are you going to compete with that? Right, you know, right. um, it just didn't make any sense to begin with. Anyway, I don't know why they would do that. Um, some people are saying, you know, they're doing that just just to, like, keep his legacy away from LeBron James. <laughs> oh, wow, really? <laughs> you know, I mean, imagine if, if LeBron goes into the finals and he, he wins this year. Uh, but that, that's, a, <laughs> that's a topic for another time. So let's move on um, to the NFL right now. Um, you know, a lot of things going to the NFL right now. Um, none more than what's happening with the Patriots. Um, so Patriots have a lot of moves. Um, they have lost a lot of pieces. Um, you know, let's talk about their outlook a little, a little bit, especially their quarterback situation. Um, as you guys know, you know, we, we beat a head, dead horse. Uh, Tom Brady's not, not coming back. Um, <laughs> out. Um, and, you know, a lot of past Nation. You know, they know we have Jared Stidham, but they, they would love to see Cam Newton. Well, what's your thought on, on that? On Cam coming here? Yeah. I don't like it. I I don't think Cam is suited to for that wall in New England. One, if he comes here, I want him to take a pay cut. I don't think Cam is going to take a pay cut. Two, I think... Um, for for Bill Belichick's style and the way Kim is a little flashy, I just I just don't see it. Um, you know, I want the best for Kim. I'm 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 a fan, like I talked about in the last podcast. Um, I just don't think his style is just gonna mesh with New England. I I I, I would rather start with Jared Stidham um, and see what he got instead of going with Kim Newton. No, yeah, I would definitely agree with that, uh, Vlad, and kind of just elaborate on that. I definitely think you're right. And Kim Newton's not a good fit here. Uh, just, you know, from a football standpoint, yeah, I don't think that uh, it will really work out with, with him if he were to come here um, as far as the kind of you know, it's the system, you know, and plays that the past run, uh, the things try to, you know, likes to call. I mean, I'm sure he would, if he does, did come here, which I highly doubt they would, since they're not really interested in uh, acquiring him. Uh, but if he did, I'm sure they would adjust it. But I just think that uh, since they are in rebuilding mode now, the rebuilding phase of their uh, franchise, and uh, and, and then probably want to, you know, go go younger and start a, you know, younger uh, quarterback uh, like a Jared Stidham. I feel as if they should, and I don't feel like they're going to be very good next year and could possibly miss out on the playoffs. So I think that uh, with that having been said, I'd rather see, you know, them give Jared Stidham a chance uh, to at least, you know, be the starter this year and see how he does in the training camp and in the preseason, uh, you know, and in the start of the regular season uh, as, as well and see if he can uh, be, you know, the next franchise quarterback, uh, you know, since, you know, perhaps to have a already a tough schedule and not, uh, I don't think it's going to be, you know, a 500 team like next year. So uh, we'll you know, to, and since that, you know, the case, and I certainly think that, you know, Jared Stidham is probably the best suited guy to be this part. I definitely would like to see them draft a quarterback in the draft 
uh, this year, you know, without question. Um, and, and, you know, they're going to try to develop him and see what um, he can do and if he can, uh, you know, work well in our system. Uh, but certainly, I don't really see Kim Newton uh, being with, with the Pats uh, next year. I don't think that'd be a good idea to, to bring him in. I think he probably should go somewhere else where he can actually win and uh, you will win that and that's like not rebuilding the, you know where China is trying to go younger and bring a lot of you know young talent in, in the, on the roster which you know we should since we do have 12 picks uh, coming up in the draft and I'm sure we'll probably use most of them to fill those needs that we have on the roster. All right, yeah, man. Um, I don't want to say too much about Cam Newton. It's just no. <laughs> no. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong. I like Cam Newton. You know, I, I love his slider. I love, you know, he's big body. He's athletic. Um, he can run. Um, he can improvise and things like that. But he's just not a fit for us, um, you know, scheme-wise. And I think a lot of people, they don't um, – they don't – they don't see that, you know, they don't really look into that. It's just like um, I did a, another um, poll on, on Instagram where I asked people would they want to see um, Cam Newton signed by the Patriots, and I got like 86% yes on that too. And a lot of really? people... Really? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I posted it. I, I, wow, I, I didn't realize it was that high. Yeah, That's it crazy. was pretty high. Wow. Um, but, um, you know, what I kept getting from from the people that were voting was that, oh, yeah, we need somebody to make a buzz here. And it's like, what? <laughs> listen, bro. Like, like we're rebuilding. We're we're rebuilding. Rebuilding. Listen, <laughs> listen, bringing Cam Newton here brings nothing but more pressure on this team. Right. You know, right. With, with um, Tom Brady leaving, like, they, we need to start off fresh, okay? Exactly. Don't start off with somebody that, that was a former MVP, then we have unrealistic um, expectations of him. Because yep, he's doing yep. over here and actually take us, you know, to the Super Bowl. Like, I don't know if people have been watching him in, 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 in Carolina. Like, he's had one of the best running backs um, in the league, you know. Um, Christian McCaffrey, yeah. He had one of the best tight ends in the league. And then, Greg Olson, yeah. Um, and he's also had some really good receivers in his in his um, tenure as a starter too. Yeah. Um, I just don't think he's a fit here. Uh, I don't think his personality would mesh with Bill Belichick. Um, right, right. I think that um, Jared Stidham. I mean, I have no choice but to believe in him just because like I read b- between the lines a lot. You know, um, Tom Brady's gone. I don't think Bill Belichick is somebody that was like, yo, Tom Brady's coming back. Like, I don't have to, I don't have to prepare for anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't strike me as a guy that's like not gonna prepare for the future, no matter who's at what position. You know, as you know, as you guys remember, 2014, he got Garoppolo. He was about to ship Brady out of here. You know, right, right. Um, he didn't even want to trade him in 2017. Right? You know, and um, as an objective um, sports fan. You know, I watch a lot of I, I watch Patriots every Sunday. You know, and if you're if you've been watching Tom Brady for the last 20 years, you could tell like Tom Brady was regressing. I don't care how much you love Tom Brady, you knew that you know like he wasn't Tom Brady. You know, right? Like, wasn't the Tom Brady? He's Tom Brady, Brady but right, he's like right, not right. Tom Brady in his prime, which is unfair. We can't we can't really expect him to be that. Um, but at the same time, it's like. I think people should give Bill Belichick some credit too, where like this is the greatest coach of all time, you know, and he's meticulous. I don't think he's just gonna like sit down and it's like, oh yeah, I have a fourth rounder. We're just gonna throw him in there, you know, and listening to the stuff that um, the other players are saying, you know, the defensive players like Devin McCourty, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gilmore, Stephen Gilmore, you know, talking about how you know, confident they are in him. Um, I don't think they would just say that just to say that because it's not our team, you know. Like, our team, we don't just talk just to talk about it, you know. And I don't think they're giving him confidence because we're not a team that does that. 
You know, no, I hear you on that, John. I'm trying to cut you off, but it's like, what else are they supposed to say? Oh, I'm right, right. Gonna say, what I'm saying is, you know, good things about right. him now that he's going to most likely be the guy. Sorry, yeah. What I'm saying is, like, I, if he was trash, I don't think these guys would come out and just be like, oh, we're going to put out a confidence booster out there. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I don't think. Make him good, good just to just make him out, right. oh, give him some confidence. I don't think they're those kind of guys. Right, right. right? As much. And I think as much as I agree with what you're saying, John, I still think that I'm not saying he sucks, but he can be that. Like, is he? Do they, how do they know he's that good? I know they play against him in practice and stuff like that, but I think Belichick is making a point for them to come out and say and say some of those things. Well, listen, um, I kind of compare him to like the Alex Smith and uh, Patrick Mahomes situation. You know, yeah. Alex was, was a good starting quarterback. He was doing his thing. He was going to the playoff. Yeah. But like, you've seen um, Travis Kelsey come out and say that he could ball. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that was way before Patrick Holmes ever took the field as a starter. Right, you know? right. So, what I'm, I get what you're saying, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, people are using the fact that he's a fourth-round pick. And it's like Russell Wilson was a fourth-round pick. Bro. That's true. Tom Brady right. was a... Six-round six round pick. Right, so like, right. how can you tell me that, you know, we can't know if this guy's about it or not, you know? And not for nothing, the guy was the starting quarterback, all OTAs, you know, because Brady's out, you know? So they had a good chance to see him up close and personal. And, I mean, watching the preseason, I know it's a preseason. I've seen some really good stuff out of that kid, all right? And um, I think he was projected to be a first-round pick the year prior if he had come out. And so the, the Auburn went through a lot of changes. Yeah. And he fell off, you know, his senior year. Yeah. And, now, and now I feel like we got to, you know, I can't say we have a steal because we haven't seen him play yet. Right. But like, you know, he, he started at Oregon as a true freshman, like a 19 year old kid, you know? Um, so I think there's something there. Um, he also played in Texas, which is, you know, a breeding ground for football players. Yeah, for sure. Friday night lights over oh, there. Yeah, like, high school ball is like a big deal to them. And it's right. kind of like, it's, it's kind of like rival college, you know, down there anyway. You know, mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm personally excited to see what he can do. I'm um, personally excited to see him get a chance to be the starter. I'm personally excited to see him, you know, Run with the ball every now and then, you know, kind of like the things that Brady never did, you know, just just to see like a different person at the helm, a different a different style of QB. He likes a long ball too, and you know that's not that wasn't Tom Brady's strength. And mm -hmm. I kind of like to see the ball being pushed down the field a lot of times. You know, it, Tom Brady did do it in 2007, but that was because he had Randy Moss in them. You know, not everybody has Randy Moss in their throwing it down the field. So mm -hmm. I just want to see. Um, where he takes us. Um, so hopefully, I mean, the fact that we're, we didn't trade for another quarterback, right? We haven't shown any interest in any of the free agent quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. um, you haven't, we've been linked to, to, to college quarterbacks, but that's a given because we're in the draft and we just lost Tom Brady. So, yeah, of course, um, absolutely. But there's no indication from the Patriots that, you know, they feel like they don't have something that they, there's no indication that they want, like, another quarterback, you know. So, I think, mm -hmm. um, I don't and know. I guess, to, I, guess to back, I guess to back up what you're saying, um, they let go of Cody Kessler as well. Cody Kessler as well. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. That's, that's another sign that they believe in Stidham. Um, we'll see. We'll see how he does. Um, I still want them to draft somebody else in the draft um, to, to push Stidham. Um, I've heard good things about Stidham. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I, I just, I'm ready to see what he can do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, yeah. me too, for sure. Yeah. So I really want to see what uh, this kid does, you know, now that he, you know, he knows and he's, you know, going to be the guy most likely and uh, going to be, you know, the starting quarterback, uh, you know, for the season coming up. So, I. Uh, I'm definitely eager to see, see him play, uh, and I hope that, um, you know, he can do well. I think he does have potential to, you know, be a, a good solid.
solid quarterback in this league, and he does have talent. Uh, and, you know, but I'm not going to, you know, get my hopes up too much until I actually see him right. play in, you know, regular season games like this. You know, even if he does have a good training camp in preseason, I want to see when the game, real, real game start and uh, when uh, he, you know, he's in those under the helmet and, uh, and under center. I, I wanted to see what exactly he uh, is able to do once um, he's, you know, the, the, the starting quarterback for this team. And, and also, um, I wanted to see, uh, you know, I'm glad that they were able to bring Brian Boyer back to China, you know, mentor him, and, uh, you know, and kind of teach him how to you know, be a professional and, uh, and you know, be, and, and sort of how to, uh, you know, a quarterback should have himself in the national football. You know, that was a good move that they were able to do that. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing him, but I'm just going to wait and see. Yeah. You know, what it, until he actually, um, you know, plays. Does and, something. Uh, you know, exactly. And does something in real uh, you know, fo- football. So yeah, we'll we'll see what happens with him. But you know, there's definitely a lot to look forward to as far as um, you know, the Jags being being the guy for the past next year. Yeah, man. Um, so you know, with that said, shout outs to uh, Jared Stidham, man. You're 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 the next man up, bro. Um, make make us proud. You know, they're on in city. City. Yeah, yeah, right, so. yeah. I think right, I think right, it's too right. early to be, you know, giving anybody nicknames. So. Right, and I also think that us fans shouldn't like expect much, like from right, right, right. have too high expectations from. Because right, this is like he pretty much a rookie. He's a rookie. Even though he, he, you know, was on the team last year, he didn't really play. So this is like his real his rookie, rookie year. season, right? And his first, you know, season actually playing. You know, where he knows he's gonna be. Uh, the, the starter and, and, and play a lot. So that's why I feel like it's, you know, not only the expectations for him, but for the team aren't really as high. And I'm not really expecting the team to have much success just because I know that, you know, he's going to go through, um, you know, some some rough times and um, rough stretches. And uh, and he's going gonna, he's gonna to take a little while for him to uh, develop and be able to, you know, you know, be a you know good starting quarterback on a winning team. Right. Um. Yeah, man. Good. Good for him. Uh. I think next thing we probably want to talk about <laughs> is um something that's never happened before. Um. You know, this year is a year unlike any other. Uh. So we have the virtual draft coming up. <laughs> yes, right. sir. Yeah. Um, we do. And that's you right. know what we're hearing is. People, well, the draftees are going to be at home and they're going to do everything virtual. It's probably kind of like what we're doing right now, Zoom, the Zoom call or yep. you know, whatever it is, some kind of FaceTime situation. Where, right, right. You know, um, I think we were talking about this last night when we were prepping the show and <laughs> you mentioned that they would have the virtual player with uh, Roger Goodell coming up to, like, come in and shake his hand and stuff like that. Yeah, so they're trying to include Madden in the production of the draft and they're trying to basically show show you the show you their virtual player going up to the podium and meeting the um the commissioner. Um I I like it. I think it's I, I think I think right now um based on how everything is um the more the more visual visually appeasing the, you can be with it the better it will be. I think, you know, you see the guys on the Zoom phone call or whatever and then seeing them go up the podium. I think it's a little cheesy, but right now there's nothing else to watch, nothing else to do, so why not? Fuck it, do it. I personally think it's a waste of time. (laughs) Really, why is that, John? Why why do you feel that way? Because, I mean, I I watch the draft every year, man, and, like, majority of the draft is – you know, Mike Mayock and all of them, you know, the, the evaluators going through their, their strengths and weaknesses. Um, you see the players on the table talking to each other, talking to, you know, their agents. 
you know, they're on the phone, like, yeah, hello, yeah, you guys, you guys take my next. Oh, you, oh, you, you're gonna pick me, you're gonna pick me next round. You, you know what I'm saying? So right, it's, right. it's mostly all that, and and the whole handshake with Roger Goodell. That's like the minuscule part of the actual draft. It's like. You spend all this time talking about these guys and then they walk on the stage for literally 30 seconds and get off. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, all right, you're wasting too much money trying to do a Madden thing because, like, it's really not needed. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd much rather see the guys interacting with their families, you know, see who's getting what phone call, see which which house starts erupting before the pick gets in. I want to see the drama, you know. But I think the thing is, I think they're gonna show you all that and then have the Madden thing added added to it. Right. I just think it's a waste of time. Like we're watching a fake Roger Goodell shake a fake play. <laughs> like what, what, what are we doing? You know, yeah, like people, people people watch um the the Madden um simulation. So I, I can see people watching that. That those are people with absolutely nothing to do with their life. There's nothing to do right now. Listen, bro. There's I'd, rather, nothing to do right now, I'd rather play Madden than sit there and watch a person play hey, all, Madden. All I'm saying is there's nothing to do right now. So if you have more visually appealing things to show, show it. I mean, I like your take. I, 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 I personally just feel like it's, it's a waste of time, you know? No, I didn't hear you. I was just saying they could do it. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it, but... Uh, like John was saying, I'm more interested and uh, intrigued on seeing other things, you know, in, in the draft with that, you know, happen as far as the phone calls and the uh, interaction that the prospects have, you know, with the agents and with the teams that, you know, call them and with their family and friends that they're uh, having the view parties with and that are watching them. So, those are things that, you know, watch and really, uh, you know, keep an eye on and actually look forward to seeing uh, when I'm watching the draft. I don't really pay too much attention to, oh, like, what handshake is this guy going to do? Uh, like, right. How is he going to dap him up right. when he goes on the stage? Like, are they going to do, like, something cool or uh, whatever? Like, yeah, I don't really mind that. And, um, yeah, I, it, it was kind of cool because I actually got to go to a live draft a couple of years ago. Oh, the dope. first one that was in, uh, in in an NFL stadium, which was in the Dallas Cowboys stadium, AT&T stadium. I went there with a couple of my friends who are Patriots and from the uh, Boston area as well. Um, That's dope. That's dope. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know you did that. I always but, wanted to do that. Year since I was there, I only went the first night to the first round. I mean, that's really the most exciting that everyone wants to see. So, like that year, I was interested in seeing like the interaction of the players were having Goodell just since I was actually there. It was definitely uh, a great experience and probably one of my best football uh, experiences being a football fan. Uh, But when I'm home watching it on TV, like, I John, I, I could care less about that. Right? Yeah. I, I really don't give a damn about that. Like, right. you know, that's not something that I actually, you know, you know, pay any attention to and have any like regard for. I'm just like, oh yeah, well, whatever. Like, just just get me to the next pick, please. Like, right, right. Keep the draft moving along. Bring my team, please. Then go up, bring the pictures. So what's the next move for the who's the next? trade, you know, going to be who's going to trade up or down from the draft, like who's, you know, going to be, you know, that, you know, surprising pick that uh, no one thinks is going to actually be picked high or that, you know, just comes up, you know, instantly that night that ends up catching everybody's attention and that uh, ends up being, you know, successful and having a good, uh, you know, rookie season. So I, I think those are the things that I look forward the most to uh, being in uh, the draft, you know, and, and actually watching it from home. Like, yeah, so that I'm definitely excited about, you know, this draft coming up in a couple of weeks and, um, and, and, and seeing how it's going to play out with the 
my first session as far as what you know the pages are gonna do uh with their picks in the draft because I know they'll be making some trades and uh and, and, and trading, you know, at least some of the picks because they have too many picks to be able not to trade. And you know Belichick loves trading uh, the draft picks when he has the opportunity to. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how everything goes in the draft in a couple weeks. But the virtual thing, I, they can do it, but whether they do it or not, yeah, I, I really don't give a damn. Uh, but like, <laughs> it, 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 like oh, whatever, like do what you guys want to do. Like if you think it's gonna attract fans and attract, you know, people to actually, you know, you and enjoy the draft more, okay, whatever, but you just, you just let me watch the draft and, and watch these, you know, guys get picked and get selected and see where they end up uh, going to. Yeah. Hi, um, what else is next? What's up? I said, what's next? Um, I think the next thing is, um, I think we, we wanted to talk about the whole Monday Night Football search, but I think, you know, that's something – I don't know if a lot of people are into it as much because I mean we're into it because we're we're avid sports fans and we mm -hmm. we want to see we, we like the entertainment factor of it we want to see somebody that knows what they're talking about commentate on the game when the games are going on um, you know we like those Tony Romo and his insight and stuff like that and it's always good to have you know former football players be the commentators you know other than Booger McFarland. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> people really hate that guy. On the oh, I know, um, I know. People think he's trash. Yeah, people think he's trash. That he has no business. I, I love room. the memes and stuff. Um, but, you know. <laughs> well, Chris Collins, right? He's the one that people cannot stand. That gives him that meme. Right, right. I despise that guy. I, but, I knew Sunday night football games whenever I'm watching them. This is I can't stand hearing uh, his voice and him calling the game. Right. Um. So I think Pat McAfee wants to be part of it, and I, I really like him for it. Yes. I don't know if ESPN like, is hating on Pat or something like that, but they're not even giving the guy a phone call. But you know, me, he works for ESPN. Does he? Yeah. I think he, he works for the NFL Network. With, uh, I with was Get Up. I see him on the Get Up show, the, the morning uh, sports talk really? show that um, Greeny and Jalen Rose. Okay, here, okay. And, and Jay Williams on, like, he, he, he's like a – a guest on that, and like he'll he'll, he'll appear on the show and uh you, you know and, and and talk um on some of like their segments and, and stuff. But uh, so I think yeah, he's important by you know he's and I know he does some stuff with NFL Network as, as well. But yeah, yes. I'm surprised if it was him a call either because uh, would be, he would definitely be a good uh candidate and I think really do well and as a uh, Monday night. As a co color commentator uh, for for Monday Night Football, uh, you know I would love to see him in, in, in that role and think he would excel in that. So yeah, he's yeah he's a pretty funny guy too. So color commentating will be pretty good for him. He has his own podcast too. You guys should check it out. Yeah, I, I listen to that. that. Oh, me too. His I, I tune in. Awesome. I tune in. Oh, yeah, no, me as well. I'm a fan of this podcast. Shout out to Pat McAfee, man. Yes, yeah. absolutely. No, he's doing his thing for sure. And you know, even, even though he was a punter, he knows what the hell he's talking about. Right, right. He's yeah. a good football mind and a good football IQ. Yeah. yeah. For the sake of time, you know, um, we're actually coming to the end of our, our show here. Um, I know anything else you guys want to talk about? I know that NHL, MLB, soccer, everything is is on hold right now. So there's nothing we can really talk about as far as far as those things. There's not even like trades happening right now. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, hopefully we get some news. I know that MLB was supposed to start. Um, was it sometime this month? No, I think there was. When, when, they, when does the season start? When would it usually start? So it usually starts the end of March. So it was supposed okay, to so start it, the last It's week. supposed to have been started uh, already. Right, right, right. So this um, last past Thursday was actually supposed to be the Red Sox opening, opening day, day yeah. at Fenway. Yeah. And then the White Sox. Yeah, that's what I thought. Right, um, right, which obviously didn't happen due to the, what was going through with the coronavirus. Right, right. So everybody knows what's going on with, with that situation. So. Oh, yeah, yeah but uh, for those of you guys heard, uh, there was something that happened that we can 
I try to bring with you uh, before you know we finish the show was that you know Chris Shell did officially have his uh, Tommy John surgery, I believe. Yeah. Uh, you know that ended up uh, happening uh, this week, and there was I know a lot of talk and debate about you know the timing of the surgery uh, as far as. <laughs> <laughs> as far as why the team decided to do the surgery when they did and um, it was, with everything that is going on with, Cardi, with what Cardi B just said of the coronavirus uh, and you know if it, they should have maybe you know held it back and done it at a better time I just since there's I'm sure a lot more uh, important things that you know the medical professionals uh, have on their plate as of at this point in time. So um, yeah, I think it was interesting that you know the team decided to do the surgery now that it actually got done. Now I you know probably think they should have maybe had the surgery not immediately once they announced it and had it. They probably should have. Uh, you know, maybe waited for some time to uh, perform the surgery, but I think they were trying to do it on uh, the download. But then once I think one of the uh, media guys had announced that they were going to have the surgery, so the team had to then, uh, you know, announce that he, Chris Hill had uh, the Tommy John. So, uh, but I'm glad he had it anyway and he really got it over with. And since the team wasn't going to be uh, very good this year anyway, even if he was there. So, uh, yeah, uh, at least they got it over with and now they can move on and, uh, you know, look forward to, uh, you know, the rest of the season when that does happen and him coming back in. 2021 and hopefully being fully healthy and being able to pitch. Right, uh, right, pitch, right. Uh, old self. Um, yeah, so, you know, um, hey, man, good luck to Chris Sale. You know? Yes, sir. <laughs> Nothing's happening right now, so, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on him. Um, but, you know, that's going to be the end of our show. You know, if you're interested in um, listening in, uh, just find us on Anchor, uh, iTunes, uh, it's Pro Fan Sports Podcast. All right, you want to follow us on social media, facebook.com slash profansports, um, Instagram, profans underscore sports, uh, uh, Twitter, profansports, uh, and we're even on YouTube, profansports there too. So if you want to reach out, you can email us um, at profansports1 at gmail.com to get to us, and, you know, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. But Thank you guys for doing the show with me, you know, as yeah. always. You know, no problem, baby. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and letting me do this. Um, right, you guys right. definitely much appreciate I'm glad we're still doing this with everything that's going on. So I'm glad to, you know, be with you guys. Uh, right. And doing what we do. Right. Um. Yeah. So, you know, until next time, Pro Fan Sports Podcast, where the fan of the pros go. Peace right. out. Peace out. All right, brother. Hey, be safe, man, and hopefully, you know, that test comes comes back negative, bro. All right. All right. I hope so. I'll, I'll keep you guys posted.